After 38 years, Dr. Steve, a dentist, has switched tools from the drill to the mic. Let's hear it for Steve Silverhart. You folks may remember me as Grandpa Joe in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. <laughs> it's great to be here tonight. I want to thank all my family and friends for coming. My wonderful wife. Honey, you're great and quiet tonight out there. Okay. It's, it's nice. She offered some constructive criticism like, You're horrible. <laughs> my son said, Don't do it, Dad. Don't go up there. Oh my God. My son in law and my daughter go, You can't write funny material. Holy shit. It's like, Jesus Christ. Like a gentle brick hit me on the back of my head. Unbelievable. <laughs> I said, it's 65 years old, you supported me through dental school, through my MBA, my training for my traffic lines. Now you throw me under the bus? What's the story over here? Unbelievable. At least I know this is a non-credit course. I got no skin in the game. It's only $5 for you to get in. See you folks. Lock the door that can't get So I want to welcome you to Ambler, a nice small town. Population never changes. A child is born. Someone leaves town. I don't know his name. Don't, don't ask me. I went to an all-black dental school called Howard University in D.C. Try staying kosher in a cafeteria that only sells soul food. <laughs> so I retired from dentistry, worked part-time. I loved the leisure. That's why I turned to stand-up for that steady unemployment. <laughs> you know, I grew up in New York, one of seven boys. Seven boys. Unbelievable. It's, it's amazing what you can do with a woman while she's held hostage. <laughs> so, again, my father was a bartender, my mother was a barmaid. So you know the score. Poverty? Unbelievable. And you know, my father could always, you know, if, my, if bartending didn't work out, my father could always fall back on his GED. <laughs> but, you, know, you know, we were poor, you know. Uh, my mother crossed out the word leftovers in the dictionary so we wouldn't get upset. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, we, <laughs> there were always multiple uses for things in the house, like we took my mother's enema, enema bag and inflated it so we can use it for a pillow or a beach toy in Far Rockaway. <laughs> we used to use socks for gloves before they were in style. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I remember our first flat. You're a funny guy. Don't compete. I'm up here. I got the money. So, I remember our first flat in Yonkers. You're making me laugh. Wait a minute. My hives are itchy. Where are these fucking spotlights? What's the matter? Where's the kind of lotion? So, so, so the first flat, the bedroom was tilted like this. I go to bed on one side and wake up down here. It was like a small boat in the high seas. I was the only kid who needed to drama me but never set foot in the boat. And you know, there's always hand-me-downs when you have six brothers. It was always go through pants like crazy. So I used to get my brother Ted's pants. The only trouble is he was 6'2 when I was 5'8. I had to pull down the zipper to blow my nose. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, I like that. That hair of yours, is that real? Oh, it's, uh, it's real. I thought it was a coupe. I have male pattern baldness, and it's, the genes are kicking in very fast. It's, it's unbelievable. I tried Rogaine, you know, a little bit in your palm, rub it in your scalp. Six months later, nothing in my scalp, but you see my hairy palms. It's great. This pharmaceutical company just came out with a new treatment for growing hair. They use stem cells, and they were successful in growing hair on mice. Can you imagine mice running around the cage with these big pompadours of hair? I'll probably try it for a long while and, and then get a beautiful head of mice tails. <laughs> don't worry about it. It'll look like an octopus glued to my head. My wife said, don't worry about that. Next time we take the kids to the aquarium, we'll leave you there. You'll fit right in. <laughs> so you know, they're starting sex education really early these days. I, mean, uh, I remember that we, my wife and I attended the sex education class in my daughter's elementary class and uh, the teacher held up a number two pencil for the you-know-what. My wife leaned over and said, look, they're preparing her for the letdown. 
I remind her of the pencil, that's unfortunate. <laughs> now my therapist says one of the most important attributes of a good relationship is can you sleep together? Okay, and that's, that can be challenging. At night my wife puts her head down the, on the pillow, that angelic look on her face, sprawled out like a starfish. By 2 a.m. she's a ninja warrior, boom, <laughs> smack in the face, elbow on the kidney, a knee in the groin. I'm at the edge of the bed now, and all of a sudden I hear her snoring. <laughs> Sounds like a walrus. <laughs> I don't know whether to kiss her or throw her a fish. <laughs> you know these, uh... <laughs> we got a live one here, lock the door. Chinese, everyone loves Chinese, right? Chinese comfort food, it's great. The nice part is that fortune cookie. It's a subliminal message. It's like a marketing tool. It gets you to come back, right? You open up the cookie, it's like you'll marry the person of your dreams, you'll inherit money, have a great sex life. Just what if you open up the cookie and you had the guy's bill next to you? You'd never come back. The place would close. In case. You know, we've just gone paperless in our house. But it presents... Problems in the bathroom. <laughs> like try to wipe your ass with an iPad. <laughs> you know, I did my usual derelict thing at night. Put on Jack and Coke, blow, you know, smoke a joint. Let those little cops in here. Tell him, and then I started to get the munchies. I went to sleep and I dreamt I ate a three pound marshmallow. The next morning I woke up and my pillow was gone. <laughs> You know what's really bad is this piercing and tattooing is really bad. I can't, this world is crazy. I mean, I saw a guy in the, in the subway a couple of weeks ago. He had perfectly placed pierced rings right across his forehead. I'm thinking, boy, would I love to hang some shower curtains on that. <laughs> and then a patient came in with a bolt right through his tongue, like the kind you find in aisle nine at Home Depot. I said, buddy, what do you do for a living? Fails. Oh, yeah. All over me. All over me. What do you do? Fails. Oh, my God. So how is business? Lousy. I wonder why. And tattooing? Oh, my God. You see these people, tattoos on all their skin. There's no virgin skin left. But I say, be practical. If you're going to do a tattoo, for you guys, how about a nice Armani pinstripe suit? 42 long. <laughs> you can leave the house and that, you don't have to wear anything. And you save on dry cleaning. The guy walks into a bar. Which bar? Uh, so he gets up, walks on the bar, and he says to the bartender, what do you got there? And the bartender says, wait a minute. He pulls out a small baby grand piano and puts it on the bar. He reaches in his other pocket and pulls out a small piano player. The piano player sits down and starts playing the piano. And amazed, the patron goes, how did you do that? He said, it's my magic lamp. He says, well, what do you do? He says, take home this lamp, open your bedroom window, and make a wish. Here, take it. Guy goes home, this is great. Goes up to his bedroom, opens the windows, it's a sunny day, closes his eyes, he goes, I wish for a million bucks. And then all of a sudden, a million ducks flies through his window. <laughs> He tries it again. He closes his eyes, opens the window. He says, I wish for a million bucks. And a million ducks flies through this window. Oh my God, this guy's frustrated. He grabs that lamp and he runs down to the bar, puts it on the bar, and he says, Hey, I did what you said. I opened the window. I made my wish. I said, I wish for a million bucks, and I got a million ducks. The bartender said, You think I asked for a 12 inch pianist? <laughs> You guys, it's so good, I got a bonus for you. You'll have to throw me off this fucking stage. You see, when you're one of seven boys, you've got to hang from a testicle to get attention. Guy's looking for a job. Walks into an employment agency. He looks like Captain Hook from Peter Pan. You know, wooden leg, a hook, and a patch over his eye, right? 
the agent said, listen, you know, before we begin, tell me about yourself. How'd you get that wooden leg? During the high seas, a naval ship threw a kick the cannonball at me. It took me leg right off. Got a nice wooden leg. He said, how did you get that hook? He was dueling with a Frenchman during the Spanish-American War. The, cut me hand off. They gave me this nice sharp hook. He says, well, how did you get that patch off? He says, I was looking up one day and pigeon shit in my eye. He said, you were a patch because pigeon shit in your eye? He says, no, matey, it was the first day I got my hook. <laughs> I